fair laws, no bad laws, just fair laws. I think it's really important to uh, commemorate International Whores Day. Um, those workers back in 1975 really did start the sex workers' rights movement. So that's one of the reasons why I'm here. I think it's important to commemorate that work. As a, a trade union official before I came into Parliament, it's always seemed to me that sex workers needed to have the same rights and responsibilities as other workers. And uh, all these decades later, um, it still hasn't happened. We have long supported the campaign to decriminalise sex work in South Australia. So I'm here today to lend my support as a, um, an open and out sex worker to the push for decriminalisation. There are a lot of sex workers who couldn't be here today because the stigma attached to sex work, their families don't know, their friends don't know, so they can't put their faces out. Me, everybody I know knows what I do. I'm not ashamed of it. In fact, I'm quite proud of it. There is a bill about to go before the House. This is our opportunity to have input into the wording of that bill and to support sex workers in their uh, campaign to get better and fairer conditions. We're here today uh, to continue to fight for decriminalisation of the sex industry in South South Australia. Um, our, our laws here are archaic from the 30s and uh, sex workers in this state, uh, their human rights are severely negated by these archaic laws. Um, what are your opinions of the sex work industry in South Australia? I think everyone's free to live their life how they want. Red Umbrella is the international symbol for sex worker rights. It's um, used as a, I guess, the symbolisation of it is as a shield to shield us from stigma and discrimination, um, also to hide our identities. And we've, uh, sex worker rights groups around the world have really taken the red umbrella and, and used it a lot. I don't know. I don't know about any laws. I guess you're not allowed to hussy on the street. Just that you got to hide it, I guess. <laughs> don't put it out in the open. That kind of these days tend to take the opportunity to, to out myself and, um, and often it, it's good because if they have no idea, it kind of re, you know, it reinforces the fact that it, it is quite a normal job because you obviously didn't notice my alien ears or my antennas. Uh, so, you know, I must be a normal person, uh, which means what my job must be more normal than they thought of it. Um, the laws around it, not a lot actually assume it wouldn't be lawful. I don't know if it's illegal though. And yeah, so there's a different different rules in every state and they're very confusing um, as you cross the borders and many sex workers are transient. I don't know anything about the laws around it though. We've never sort of experienced it much. You know, I don't live in the cities. In South Australia, the laws pertaining to sex work are very old. It's criminalised for sex workers. Um, while the actual selling of sex is not illegal, everything surrounding sex work is illegal, which makes it impossible to sell sex in any kind of organised way without breaking laws. So, for example, um, receiving money in a brothel, being on premises of a brothel, running a brothel, living off the earnings of prostitution, procuring sex work and soliciting sex work are all um, illegal. So, as I said, it's next to impossible to do sex work legally and sex workers are pretty much criminalised. A friend of mine got me into it when I was 16 and I ran away from home. Yeah. Um, but then after I got raped by John, I decided to leave the streets and waited until I was of age. From the sex aspect of it, you know, the sex is uh, a means to many other emotions and outcomes and things like that. So, um, it, to me, in a, a lot of times, it is the, the least significant part of what it's going to allow um, to happen after that point. Some nights you could make as little as 60 to to $100. Other nights you could make thousands. There was one girl I knew that got a $10,000 tip. They pay us to leave, they pay us to keep our mouth shut. They pay us for privacy and discretion. My best customer would have to be a gentleman over in Perth and he actually booked me for seven days straight. 12 hours a night. That was really good. I got to spend it with someone that 
I ended up getting to know and he paid me just for his company as well. It wasn't just about sex like everyone thinks. It's never an easy thing when clients get attached um, because, you know, they're genuine emotions um, and they, you know, usually are, you know, really nice people. Um, and they're just looking for the same things everybody else is looking for. Um, I think in general they're looking in the wrong place, you know. Um, but, I, yeah, I think, you know, for a lot of people, once they've had sex with you, they feel that some you know, you have something mutual together. There's no use hiding it because it does get out. You do get caught out. One day a John could come in and it could actually be your cousin or your brother-in-law. I think, you know, some of the most, the, the funniest things are the, the things that are kind of really difficult for people. You know, like what do you do when you kind of walk out into the intro room and your uncle's sitting there? I personally have been involved for eight years, um, however SIN has been um, around for 22 years now, we had our 21st birthday last year, and sex workers in South Australia have been fighting for at least that long, probably longer. Um, it's very difficult to get our voices out there because um, you know we are so stigmatised and criminalised. I actually left the industry um, three and a half to four years ago now. Um, the reason being is it's one of those industries that it does do your head in. It does get to you emotionally and mentally as well and does take a lot out of you physically. So sex workers um, also see a whole range of people from the community as their clients, including um, people with disabilities and aged people in places, people and sometimes who are in aged care facilities. That's, that brings me back to the point of depression or loneliness. Um, that's probably a good therapy. So one of the things that um, sex workers may get used for in a disability setting is not, as I said, not just sex or um, penetration, but also other forms of um, sexual um, expression. So for example, we've had a couple, both who had a disability, um, who wanted to have sex with each other, but had such an extreme disability, they weren't able to get in position to have sex. So whose job is it to do that? And they ended up um, accessing a sex worker who, whose job it was to actually help a, a couple have sex. Uh, so we are very, very hopeful that in 2012 we'll we see a decriminalised sex industry and we'll see sex workers starting to get equity in our community and to enjoy the rights that other uh, community members already enjoy. It was great having um, everybody come out, all the sex workers, but also all the other groups that came out, the unions and the workers' rights organisation. It really helped put it as a workers' rights issue as opposed to you know, a criminal issue or the sex workers need to be saved. I hope that we are able to get the laws changed and that we can get enough people behind us to do this. Our body, our choice. Don't forget it. You're in charge.